Mike Phillips down here at Auto Geek Show Car Garage in sunny Stewart, Florida, and I want to share with you some tips and techniques for covering up and taping off the different trim components of a car. Now, every car you work on is going to be different, so there's no hard set rules for how you do it. You pretty much just got to size up the car and figure out what needs to be protected and then go from there. Now, one thing about this is it'll take you a little more time at the beginning of a process to go ahead and tape off and cover up a car, but anytime you're machine polishing, there's always that risk you're going to throw a little splatter onto these areas. And if you don't cover them up, then you're going to have to come back at the end of the project and remove all that residue. And if you've ever tried to remove polish or wax residue off things like pebble textured black plastic, you know how tough that can be. So taping off at the beginning takes a little more time, but it saves you time overall. So let me go ahead and set up and I'll share some tips and techniques that I use myself when I detail a car. This is what I call the beach towel tip. Now, Whenever I detail a car, what I like to do is I like to cover up the windshield. And the reason for this is a lot of times when you're machine buffing the hood or anywhere around it, you're going to end up throwing some splatter onto the glass. And I don't know what it is about splatter, but a lot of times you come back and you want to try to wipe it off. It seems like all you do is you move those little white dots of splatter everywhere instead of actually getting them off with your rag. And I don't want to spend any more time on the cleanup than I have to. So I like to use what I call a, the beach towel tip. And I take and I put a beach towel across here. And the reason I use a beach towel is because they're longer. Most beach towels are around 60 to 70 inches long and a normal bath towel oftentimes won't cover the front of all windshields. So I use a beach towel for this. Now before I do that the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and tape off the rubber gasket surrounding the windshield uh, between the paint on the body. And the reason for this is first of all I got to do it anyway okay because I want to get I'm going to take a machine polish this whole Porsche out. I don't want to get any splatter residue onto this rubber because it could stain it. So I got to do it anyway and then once I got the tape on there then I can actually just tape the beach towel to my tape line and I find that to be faster if you want to put the beach towel on first you could always do that too. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tape line around the rubber gasket around this windshield. And a lot of times when I do this I want to keep I want to keep the the tape on the rubber portion as much as I can, but if I have to hedge my bet and put it either on the paint or just the rubber, I'll put it a little bit on the paint because I want to get any of that white residue from my compounds and polishes onto that rubber at all. So anyway, I'm just going to bring this around. A lot of times you want to keep this kind of pulled out of ways. It'll help you as you're, as you're trying to work this around and flex it. If you're up too short, you don't have any play with your tape. Okay. Pull the wiper up. And you could use a fatter tape if you want to, but since I'm going to be covering the rest of this gasket and the glass up with the beach towel and another layer of tape, then I'm just going to go ahead and use this thinner tape. And when you're putting the tape down, you do want to make sure that you press fairly firmly. You want this tape to be able to last through possibly two, three, maybe even four different machine processes depending on what you're doing with the car. So you need to make sure you push that down securely so the edges don't lift up in case you run the polisher for the pad into it. Come around here to the edge. Make this corner. And a lot of times uh, I see people on the forum they talk about how uh, if there's, a, they're asking the question, is there an easy way to tape? And to tell you the truth, there is no easy way. Uh, in fact, the most important thing to do is to take your time and do a good job, and uh, that way you don't have the tape lift off and have to come back and do it again. Uh, the only guys I've ever met that are really good and really fast at taping off cars are professional painters. And the reason they're good and the reason they're fast is they've been, they've been doing this for years. So just practice makes perfect. Okay, so now that I got the tape on there, it's on there real nice and secure. Now this area here is not covered up, but that's what the beach towel is for. So I'll put the beach towel on. Okay, for this I'm going to use a little fatter tape. Set this down. Take my beach towel. Fold it out. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and secure it at the top. Let's use a piece to do that. Okay, and I'll stick it right there in my tape line. And then uh, I can take it over here and just fold this up till it matches kind of the, the uh, curve of the window or the, the frame here. And then again, just take my towel and then snug it up there 
on the tape line I've already got down. Come on here and get the other side. So I tape the top first and work my way down. Okay, just like this. And as you work your way around, just tuck the excess up underneath there and then finish taping it off. Just like that. And that's how I would tape off a windshield. These are called wheel maskers. Now, body shops use these to cover the wheel and tire so as they're painting the car, they don't get overspray paint on the wheel and the tire. But you can use these same things when you're detailing your car to cover your wheel and tire so when you're machine polishing around it, you don't get any splatter on there. And then again, have to come back and clean that up later on. Basically, they're a piece of canvas with wire sewn into one end. They just kind of go onto the wheel, you shove them back, fit them on, there you go. Covered, protected, quick and easy. Then just keep moving around the car. They come in sets of four. And cover up those wheels and tires. Then you can move on to the next step. Now, sunroofs are usually a bit of a problem, and that's because they oftentimes have a rubber or a felt gasket around the entire perimeter. Now, this Porsche has felt, and I'll tell you one thing, it's important to tape this off because if you don't, and you think you're gonna be able to machine buff this with a compound, a polish, and a wax, knock any residue on there, it's gonna happen. And trying to dig it out with a brush of some type is gonna end up ruining the fuzzy, the look of it. So uh, whether it's your car or customer's car, you wanna make sure that you do everything you can to try to tape this off to protect it. Now for every car, it's gonna be different. For this, what I did is I looked at it and I figured let's take and open it up and take a look. So grab that. Now when I open this up, what this is gonna do is it's gonna enable me to go ahead and tape right to the paint line around the outside edge and then fold the tape over and protect this fuzzy that way. So that would look like this. And again, I'm gonna have to put just a little bit of that tape line down on the paint because again, I don't wanna get any residue into the fuzz. It's gonna be hard to get it out, especially once it dries. Let's bring that around. Again, I keep my tape fairly long here. That just helps me to pull this edge up and then fold this around. And follow that tape line, that body line. Okay, just like that. Okay, now take it on and fold this down. And what I'm doing with my fingers, I'm actually pulling this up so it can kind of scrunch in there. Otherwise it tries to bend down and causes problems. Okay. I'll take again, I'm gonna take and fold this down. What that's effectively doing is it's actually covering all the fuzzy for this front trim piece. And then again, I want to take a clean microfiber. I'm just going to come back and use this instead of my finger to gently work that tape down. So I've got a good seal between the tape and the paint. Okay, now walk over, bring it back up, and get the back side. Okay, so that made it real easy to protect this leading edge. This back edge, there's no way to really get to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape it off, and I'm gonna very carefully use a plastic razor blade to trim my edge.
This is where you want to be really careful. You can get thinner tapes for this, but if you don't have a thinner tape, this technique will usually work for you. Anything's better than leaving this unprotected when you're machine polishing. And real carefully, just come down here, cut that right along the fuzzy. Pull that off. And then come back and push that down nice and snug using a microfiber towel. That way you get a good seat against the paint, against the fuzzy, and you're not trying to rub your finger against that. And a lot of times your finger doesn't want to uh, rub smoothly over paint, but a microfiber will. There's a little technique for you. Continue working around the car, taping off anything you don't want to have to dig residue off of later. Now, most cars have windshield squirters. This one has them right here, located up here, right in front of the windshield. And a lot of times, if you look at someone's car, someone's buffed it out and they haven't taped it off, you'll notice it's all caked full of white residue in there. So I don't want to do this car, so I'm going to take some tape, just come down here and carefully tape this off and cover up not only the plastic housing for the squirter, but the holes where the water comes out of. Then I'm just going to take and fold the tape over, just like that. Um, the other thing you notice is I didn't cover up the windshield wipers yet, and that's because when I come back and machine polish this, there's going to be some points where I'm going to want this down so I can polish the paint right here. When I come back in here, I'm going to want this up so I can get in here easier. So that's why I didn't want to cover these up with the windshield. But I am going to want to take and cover up around the plastic housing here and actually the base. And a lot of guys will actually cover up the whole entire wiper because there's nothing like trying to get white dots of splatter off intricate components like this that would be unsightly. So for this, I want to take and use actually a little bit fatter tape. And just come down here and Again, I just want to cover up anything I don't want to dig splatter off of later. Um, one of the things I always talk about on the forum is that I love polishing paint, but I hate detailing cars. And I call detailing cars, that's when you have to take a little brush and get all the crud off the trim. So, you now let's see, I can still open, or I can still lift this up and down, but the base is protected. And I go around and get the other side. Okay, so we got that all taken care of. The next thing, if you look up here, there's this plastic grill up here. This is probably a type of fresh air intake. And again, if I'm going to be up here machine polishing, I don't want to throw any splat up there. Any, any, any polish you use this white, you get white drops caught into that grill there, and it's going to show up like a sore thumb. So to do that, I need to open the hood up and then get inside the front there to cover that up. Okay. This one I'm going to be using some fat green painter's tape. Just going to come in here and eye that up. And snuggie that up there right to the bottom of that lip of paint there. And push it down. And then I'll check it by closing this. There we go. Covered up, one piece of tape, no detailing work in that area. Now up here I've got another piece of plastic trim. This is actually some of that pebble uh, texture plastic trim I was talking to you about. So I'm definitely going to tape this off. And again, I'm going to want to open the hood up so I can access that area. Okay, so this allows me access because this part right here is a lot thicker. It actually is one piece. It starts over here at the edge of the fender, then runs all the way over to the other side of the fender. So let me go ahead and set up and do this next.
come across this wide portion here, I can knock this out some fat tape. But the section between the front here and the sides of the fender is pretty thin. So I can't actually use the fat tape on that section there. It's just too, it's just too wide. But this is pebble texture plastic, so I definitely want to get it covered up because uh, there's a lot of scratches and swirls in the paint in these areas. I know I'm going to be doing a lot of machine buffing in these areas, so definitely want to get it covered up. Okay, let's switch back over to the thin tape. Rub it around the, wrap it around the edge of the fender there for good adhesion. And then just bring this around. And again, keeping this spread out from where you're actually pushing allows you to kind of twist it and flex it and help you make these uh, more complex curves. And in this case, I have the tape overlapping just a little bit onto the paint. Okay. And again, that's just so I don't have to come back and dig any wax or polish residue off that pebble texture black plastic trim which is like the curse of the car world okay there we go and then come back and again push that down nice and firm if you're doing a multiple step machine polishing process chances are really good at some point you're going to be running that uh, buffing pad into the edge of this tape. Even if you're really careful, you might hit it and you don't want it to loosen up and then have to come back and put it back on again. Okay, so I got that done and go ahead and uh, close that. But also, just notice here, there's also some uh, uh, headlight squirters here too. And uh, yeah, looking down inside there, there are actually some white residue. So the guy before me, we call that Tagwa, the other guy's wax residue. He, uh, he left me something to dig out. I'll try to get most of that out for the owner. But I am going to cover it up for right now because I want to. I don't want to put any more in there. That's how you get them, just like that. Just wrap it around, scrunch it up in the center. Now, a lot of cars have a rubber gasket between the hood and the fender line here, and this one does. And whenever you're machine polishing, you'll be surprised at how much splatter actually can travel down between the cracks and crevices of body seams and uh, places where like the hood matches up the fender line here. So again, uh, just to save time on the back end, I'm just gonna go ahead and run a piece of this wide painter's tape right down the center here and cover that completely up. And then that'll save me time for having to come back and dig any splatter off there. This side. Okay. There we go. And then, of course, the hood should still close freely. Just like that. Now there's a rubber gasket between where the headlight mounts to the fender here between these two body panels and because it's black, the gasket's black and the paint's black, if you get white residue down there and it ends up drying it's going to show up like a sore thumb. So you want to be sure to tape this off and um, they make tapes in thinner widths. If you have that, use that. If not, then you can always use the plastic razor blade to get in there safely just trim that against one side. So. For stuff like this, you just want to pretty much do the best you can, and you got to pick which side you're going to tape to. And I'm going to I'm going to tape right up to the fender side. And as I pull this over back with my hand, I'm actually pulling this down pretty hard. You know, I want to tear the tape, but I want to pull it and really get it down inside that that, uh, that gap there, and snug it right up against that rubber ring. Okay. I'm going to come back and I'm using my fingers and actually my fingernails a little bit and pushing that down pretty tight. Okay. Now I'm just going to come back with the razor blade and just real carefully come in here and tape, cut that tape. Run this back over this way. Then I'll pull the excess off. And most of my machine polishing is going to be on the fender side. 
there'll be a little bit up here around the ring. So that's why I want to put most of my attention on that side right there. Okay, then pull this off. There you go. It's all covered up and taped off. And I've got a thin strip left over here. And I'm actually going to take and use this and come back down around here and get the rest of this uh, gasket right here. And I'm not going to be doing a lot of machine polishing down here. I'm going to pull this tight as I go and that'll kind of squish it up inside there. But I do want to cover it up. And I have this piece that's left over. On the other side, I want to have another piece left over. I'll do the same thing. Mash it up to that one. Tuck it down pretty good. There you go. That's how I cover up a ring around a headlight like that. Now when it comes to badges, emblems, or script on a car, if you feel like you can remove it safely, then go ahead and do so. If it's your car or a customer's car, and you don't really want to take on that risk, because a lot of times things like this are installed with what's called a speed nut. It's kind of a, a flimsy nut, it's not an actual real solid nut. And taking it off can either break the post sticking out through the back, or wear out the speed nut, and then you're going to have to get some more to put it back on. So kind of make that choice on your own. Uh, also, sometimes these are smooth over the top and sometimes you can feel the inlay, the, uh, the actual design. Now this actually has a, a design to it and if you get any kind of wax or polish residue into here, and again, you're gonna have to come back and get it out. So I'm just gonna take some of the wide tape here, pull off the strip and come down here and basically just gonna catch the edge, use my fingernail to get a good seal on there and then just kind of walk it around and then I'll fold the tape into itself. And that'll cover this up. Okay, just like, just like that. And uh, let's move to the back now. Now, most cars just have a rubber gas between the glass, the B pillars, and the rest of the car body panels for the back window. This Porsche also happens to have a piece of decorative plastic that runs between the back of the roof and the glass. So there's a rubber gasket down inside here. And my wide tape is just a little too wide to get the whole thing in one shot. So I'm going to use two pieces of a thinner tape to tape off this gasket. Shove this down in here. And then I've got this complex corner over here where I've got to actually try to get the tape underneath there because uh, there's a gap there. So, but anyway, so I knock this out just using two pieces of thin tape. Get this underneath the satellite radio wire. And a lot of cars nowadays have satellite radio. And so you've got this to deal with. And usually what these do is they kind of, the way they're placed on here, vibrate around, they end up putting scratches in here. So I definitely want to take and pull that off and tape that, uh, tape that off because I'm going to want to buff this paint out. So I'm just going to carefully lift that back. Okay. And then I'm going to take some wide tape. I'm just going to gently wrap this around here. And then as I'm kind of moving this around, I don't got to worry about it scratching the paint as I'm buffing or waxing the paint out. Just like that. Now I can lay it back here, buff this paint. If I got to, I can bring it back here to buff this paint out. Now let me finish getting this complex corner here. I'm going to end up doing this with a couple pieces of tape. But there is a gap here, so I can kind of get in here and just kind of wiggle it. And then shove it down inside there. And again, every car is going to be a little different, so there's no easy set rules to how to do this. The important thing, though, is just to get the tape onto the trim, uh, press down firmly so it'll stay there during the buffing process, and uh, protect that trim. Now I can go ahead and finish doing this gasket here. And uh, now I can actually switch over to a little wider tape and then knock this out in two or three pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and run this right up to the end of the tape where it's loose. Push that down kind of snug so it keeps my tape roll there. Come back, press this down. That looks good. Now I'll walk over here, pick up where I left off.
and lift this out a ways and then pull this corner up that allows you to bend it around that curve and then just oops, need to anchor it by pushing on it so it doesn't lift off again and just bring it up here seal that down give myself a tear and come back and push that firmly and again if you want to you can come back using a microfiber just because it'll it'll uh, rub against the paint and the tape here easier than your skin and just come back and just firmly push that on now I'm going to take and I want this sealed all the way to the glass here just so the dust from my machine buffing doesn't get in here and get wedged in around that gasket okay then this wiper blade to me at this point it doesn't really seem to be like it's going to be in the way if a person wanted to they could wrap this with a microfiber or throw some tape around the base just in case you throw any splatter from these lower areas up in this direction now every car has what i call the tricky part and on this porsche the tricky part is the deck lid now not only is the whale tail attached to it but the back design is actually a functional fresh air louvered intake with the grill behind it to keep any large material from falling down inside there where the air filter is. Now I popped the deck lid here and I looked underneath to see how complicated it would be to actually remove the grill and then just cover everything up from the back side and it got really complicated so instead of doing that I'm going to go ahead and tape this off because again I'm going to be machine polishing around the perimeter and I'm going to do some probably maybe some machine but probably some at least some hand polishing on these ribs here and I don't want to get any white residue down into the grill because it'll be there forever It'll be very inside so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tape this off. It's a little bit complicated and there's these little thin ribs right here that run down the, uh, the, the length of these uh, long ribs here. And you can do one of two things. You could actually tape off just the grill section and cut these so you could hand polish this or just go ahead and tape off all the way across here and then after you've done all your major machine polishing and even waxing you come back and you can just do a little fine hand polishing to these little uh, miniature ribs here. So that's actually the approach I'm going to take because when I get down and look at them they're actually in pretty good shape. It's not like they're all swirled out. They're just, they're just in the way for taping this off. So to do this uh, I'm going to be using a thin tape and I'm going to have to make two passes. The wide tape I have is just too wide to do it in one pass. So I'm going to use two strips of thin tape. There we go. Through the magic of time-lapse photography, that didn't take any time at all. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish taping off the well tail here. For that, I'm going to switch over to a much wider tape because this is a fairly large piece of trim. Then I'm going to move around to the sides. I'm going to do the rubber trim around the windows and the door handles. Then I'll do a second check of the car and catch anything that I might have missed. And then this car will be taped off. Okay, trim around that door is taped off. And as I walked around the car doing a double check, uh, up here there's some uh, turn signal lights and night lights. And there's actually some black pebble textured 
trim separating the two lenses and there's actually already some uh, dried wax residue stuck in there so I'm for sure going to want to tape that off and a lot of times those le these lenses here they've got raised letters on them and if you run the buffer or throw any splatter in there it gets wedged in around the letters and that looks kind of unsightly too so I'm going to go ahead and tape those off I also want to come over here I've taped off the door I got up here right around the door handle. I'm going to want to get in here by hand and take the scratches out of here by hand. And But if I come up here, I've also got a uh, rubber gasket between the uh, side mirror and the door panel. So I want to take and tape that off too. And I think about that point, we should have just about everything covered off. Now, I can't get a machine down here and buff around the base of this mirror. so. A lot of this work here I'm going to be doing by hand, but again, as I'm machine buffing in other areas, I don't want any splatter flying down in there and cause me to have to bring a nylon brush or something in there to try to get that out of there. So I want to take and just put a little tape around that and cover that gasket up. There we go. The entire car is now taped off and covered and we're ready to start machine polishing. Now just to recap why we tape this car off in the first place is because it'll save you time overall. Spending a little bit of time in the beginning taping off trim, glass, wheels and tires will save you from having to come back and detail and get any splatter or residue out of these areas or even using a nylon brush of some type to try to dig it out of the trim or out of the cracks and crevices. So taping and covering off will save you time. Now for all your detailing supplies visit AutoGeek or you can call our customer care hotline. That's at 1-800-869-3011 where our friendly staff is always ready to answer your questions. And don't forget to swing by our fun and friendly discussion forum. That's where you'll find me answering questions and posting new how-to articles. I'm your host Mike Phillips and I'll see you again on the next edition of AutoGeek's Show Car Garage.